We are fortunate at Sport Fishing on the Fly as we get to fish with a variety of people. And today, Brian Chan not only joins us to fish in the fall at Douglas Lake Ranch, he also becomes part of our show by hosting the On the Bug segment. On the Bugs will air on selected shows, and Brian brings his wealth of knowledge on fly fishing and entomology to you, our viewers. So join us today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today we've got a special edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly because we're with Brian Chan and Brian, thanks for joining us. And we're actually at Mini Lake in the Douglas Lake Ranch, but that's not what the show's about today. It's the end of October and we're gonna talk about fishing a lake in the end of October because as you're saying, it's one of the best times of the year to fish a lake. You bet, Grant. It's, it's late fall and um, these fish should be happy. They'd be happy in any lake this time of year simply because of some certain changes that occur in the water chemistry. What do you mean by, by being happy? Well, they should, <laughs> They should be wanting to eat big time right now because okay. the lakes are going to be frozen in another two to three weeks and they're going to go into a semi-dormant state during the winter. So they want to try to get as much body fat on prior, prior to that water temperature really getting cold. So they're bulking up and bulking up on what? Well, they should be looking for nice fat shrimp and nice long leeches. Fat shrimp right here. And I got long... a fat shrimp right there just tied on. And the long leech. And a big leech, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know what it, local knowledge is, one of Brian's leeches right here, so of course got to start with that. Oh, that of yeah? <laughs> well, hopefully it'll work. Yeah, so where else are we going to go look? Well, we're going we're gonna to go check out some weed lines, okay. um, because that's where the shrimp are, and leech are still kind of seeking protection from those uh, foraging trout. And uh, so we'll be fishing the edges of the weeds in fairly shallow water. That's typical of fall fishing in any lake. Real shallow, five feet or less, and hopefully we'll even be catching fish in two and a half, three feet of water. Good. The nice thing about Mini Lake, big fish. Big fish. <laughs> <laughs> Private lake, you get the big fish. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, let's go do it. We'll yeah. be right back and uh, we'll get into some fish. Yeah. Well, we changed it up. <laughs> we weren't, weren't having much luck on the. Uh, on the leaf patterns, but uh, decided to put on a little shrimp. Go dry, work the weed bed, and we got this guy. He's just in the in the weeds picking off shrimp. So got to get him up here and show everybody. The thing with shrimp is they take it so delicately. We have actually what we've done is flies moved out into a different area, of grass way over in that other area. We're kind of searching out the fish right now. We just got out in the water. We saw a couple of moves here in the shoal, but very few. So. And try to get this gap and show everybody. And one thing about Mini Lake is you get the big rainbows in here. They're just big, big fish. And this guy took that shrimp so delicately. <laughs> just when you think they're ready, they keep going. Man, oh man. What we have today, too, I might as well go through the ideal setup with you. I'm using a six weight rod because there are big fish in here. It's a private lake. They do stock it with these big, big camo rainbow. And I think a six weight is about as low as you want to go. Brian was saying a five to six weight's ideal. Get this kind of fish, minimum you want is a, is a five weight. So I've got the six weight set up. Right now I've got the straight dry line on with about 12 feet of, of tippet because I am fishing fairly shallow water. It's probably no more than four feet in this area where they're coming in, you know, around in the weeds and looking for shrimp. So, oh man, this guy's being tough. Come on. Oh. There he is. Oh, boy, oh boy. Barely fits in the net. Just get him out here so I can unhook the fly. Boy. Water is cold. Okay, there's my fly. With them, we're using just barbless hooks. Pops out. And let's show everybody. So, 
Oh, he went right back in the net. There he goes. He's in the weeds. I think he's a pretty healthy fish too. <laughs> That's the tough part is to now try to get him out of the weeds. Yeah. Or muscle him out. Well, you know, I did put a strike indicator on. Saw a couple guys rising in there. Without the strike indicator, I never would have known that that guy was on. Oh, nice size fish. Like you were saying too, you know, this is just the joys of coming to a private lake like many lakes is you get quality fish. But there's so many other lakes around this area that you can go, especially in the fall. You know, there's no specific date, but if it's, you get there a couple weeks before the ice turns on, you got Stump Lake, you got Tunqua. There's just so many around here that you can go to, to to get this type of fish and this type of action. They're all excellent fisheries. They all have big fish and plenty of them. Oh, don't like to fit in the net. Oh, healthy fish. Whew. Right on the edge there. There's the, there goes the, the shrimp. You know what we'll do here, get this guy back in the water and released is we'll uh, take this to the bench now once we get this guy. Maybe a look at him. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Eh? Beauty. <laughs> what a beauty. There he goes. Excellent fish. Oh, now water is really cold. Well, we'll go to the bench now and show you how to tie up this glass bead headed shrimp. And we'll come back for some more fish. Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today I'm gonna to tie you up the pregnant shrimp. This pattern was originally tied by Ron Armstrong out of the Vernon area. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We're gonna tie the shrimp on a size 12 Tamco 205BL hook. We'll use some 8 odd olive thread to tie with, a clear glass bead as the head, some fine deer hair for the tail, some fine deer hair for the back, some small copper wire for the ribbing. For the egg sac, we'll use some hot orange Angora dubbing, and for the body, some olive dubbing. To start the fly off, I put my glass bead on the front and I tied in my olive thread. Now what I've done is stacked a small portion of deer hair. I'm going to measure it up to the hook and I'm going to extend it past the eyelet about an eighth of an inch just to make sure when I fold it back, it'll form a tail. So we'll take that in and just tie the deer hair in. I'm going to take some of my small copper wire and we're going to tie it in now at the back of the fly by the hook bend and this will be used for ribbing up the shell back later. To start dubbing the body, I'm going to take my olive dubbing and I'm going to keep it fairly thin. And just dub in, and slowly wind in a body, keeping it fairly thin and I'm going to wind right to the middle of the hook. Once I hit the middle of the hook, I'm going to take some of my hot orange dubbing and put in a small patch about an eighth of an inch wide. And this is going to imitate the egg sac on the fly. And again, keep it fairly thin. Now to finish off the dubbing body, I'm going to take some more olive dubbing. And again, keeping it fairly thin. I'm going to dub it on and wind it, wind it forward up to the eyelet of the hook. Now that I have the body tied in, I'm going to take the deer hair that I put in originally. I'm going to bring it back the back of the hook. I'm going to take that ribbing material, the copper wire, and we're just going to slowly go over our shell back and form some ribs on the fly. Now I'm just going to whip finish off the fly, snip that off. And what I like to do is take a dubbing brush, a little dubbing picker, and what we're going to do is pick out all these hairs down below just to form legs on the fly, make it look like a shrimp. And pick it out good, make sure it's the length of the hook gap. Well, there it is, the finished pregnant shrimp. When the tree starts to change color and falls in the air, it's getting a little cooler, the fish know they have to fatten up for winter. So put on one of these shrimp patterns. What do you got there, Don? <laughs> Uh, it's a nice rainbow, but I hope he doesn't get my anchor up. Oh. Oh, there he goes, he's all right. That's the tough thing about these boats. These boats are beautiful out here that they supply on the ranch. You gotta remember you got an anchor. <laughs> exactly. So I got him on the shrimp. That's good. Well, we, I've noticed they're starting to move way in the weeds and just kind of little dimple, nose dimples, and that's usually a good sign this time of year they're looking for shrimp. 
So what about the shrimp? Do you know the certain species of shrimp they are? Or they, uh... yeah, the, these fish will be feeding on the, the larger gamma shrimp uh, or scuds, and they're, they're the ones that get to um, just about half an inch in length. And it's, it's these fish that feed on a heavy diet of shrimp. That's what gives them that, that beautiful red flesh color oh, okay. as well. Do they take that on the fins too? That they actually get the red color? Yeah, the they'll fins? even get that on the fins, yeah. And that's from the shrimp? That's right, yeah. Wow, gee. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we did a throat pump of this fish, we'd find live shrimp in his throat. We would, eh? Yeah. Beautiful fish, though. Oh, gee, have a nice fish. Nice colors to that one. The first one that I got was a little, little bigger. It was nice. This is a pretty fish. So I'll just keep him in the water and we'll use this little um, throat pump here. And we'll just get it lubricated with water, but there's no water in the bulb. Okay. And I'm just going to slide it down into the esophagus. Yeah, you don't want to shove it right down no, the throat, right? You want to know what he's 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 just eating right now. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna slide it in like that. And then the bulb depresses and I'm just gonna slide it back out. Again, we always use barbell sucks in here. Always catch and release. And there she is, no? That's a nice fish. That's what? you know the colors, that's different colors than the first one. Yeah. Boy, that's a pretty fish. That is. Very nice. And there we go. Got two gamma shrimp in there, and they're still alive. Two shrimp. So I'll just. So then maybe they just started feeding. I think they just started feeding. So I guess that's and that's what I have on exactly. My mine's a little bigger than. That. A little bigger, but that's just they got a little greedy too. Yeah, a little appetite. <laughs> Perfect. Well, now that you're here, let's uh, let's anchor up in here. And see. Yeah, if we can get I think you found some fish here. I think we'll go <laughs> into the shrimp. Sounds Why good. Excellent. Done is we've kind of dispersed. We were working that one area where Don caught the fish, and I caught one there too. Oh, this is a big fish! <laughs> oh, wow, this is what we come for these big fish. And uh, we decided, Brian said, well, you know, we should do it disperse because it kind of slowed down there for a minute. And this is the area I was working earlier. Don picked them up over at the other point, and I was working this area because there's a couple of nice fish rising in here. And I, thought, I just got to come back here and work it now that they're getting on the shrimp like that. And, uh, well, two casts. First fish was a little one, we didn't show him, but this guy here is definitely worthy of being on television. And all I've done is just, it has to be moving too, they don't like it sitting still. So it's casting, you can see my little uh, strike indicator just above the water there. Key ingredient right now because they're taking it just so softly, they're just kind of barely moving in, they're just taking it mm -hmm. down. So you see it go down, set, hit the net. This will make it easier, I think. <laughs> I'm even gonna fit it in this little net. It's only a 20 inch net. Okay. Now, 20 inch net, he just fits in, so he's only about a 20 inch long fish, but. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how we're gonna do this to get a good look out in here. You ready? That's, oh, we're not gonna get a good look at him. There's a way he goes. I think you could tell from being in the net there. He was almost as big as the whole net. I don't mean the lengthwise, I mean the depthwise. Today's on the bug is going to focus on freshwater shrimp. There's two common species of shrimp that are found in our productive still waters: gamras, which reach almost three quarters of an inch in length, and hyalella shrimp, which are very tiny very seldom reaching longer than an eighth of an inch in length. Both of them will be found in the same water. They enjoy highly productive, high pH water, and they live in amongst the vegetation or the marl found on the bottom of the shoal or drop-off zones of our lakes. Shrimp will mate three or four times a year, and you'll see mating shrimp as they ride piggyback through the water column. A steady diet of shrimp is what gives our trout that deep orangey-red flesh coloration. Shrimp are available to trout year-round and provide, again, the most staple form of food that you can find in our lakes. 
Well, on the technology today, we've got a, a special treat because we're fishing with Brian and we get a chance to take a few moments out of our, our fishing day and, and talk a little bit about the lake and what makes a lake so uh, perfect for fish to feed on in the fall. Well, what's unique about all these lakes in the southern interior of British Columbia and, and throughout the western states is that uh, during the summertime, these lakes get quite warm right. because they're shallow. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're shallow that there's so much invertebrate or food sources in the water because that sunlight lets all that vegetation grow and it's good habitat for the bugs. But it also means the fish aren't very happy when it gets really warm. So in the fall, when air temperatures cool down and um, sunlight becomes less, those fish become more and more active and uh, they're out searching around looking for all those invertebrates that don't have all that vegetation to hide in anymore. Right. So there are a lot easier, the shrimp are easier to find, the leeches, the juvenile damselflies and dragonflies. And so the fish usually feed very heavily right until freeze up because once there's a cover of ice on these lakes for five to six and a half months, that water's so cold and the trout are cold blooded mm -hmm. that they almost go into a semi-dormant state and they don't do a lot of feeding. Well, since how we're actively fishing with shrimp and the, the fish are feeding on shrimp, not only in the fall, but they also feed on them in the springtime because we've been here in the spring and we use shrimp patterns in the spring. That's, so that's maybe, right. Yeah, maybe talk a little bit about the life cycle of the shrimp and, and why the fish will go after the shrimp. Yeah, so shrimp are an interesting food source in that they're available 365 days a year for trout to feed on them. And, and it's really that heavy population of shrimp in lakes that really make big fish like that one you just caught. And so, at, although the trout can eat them every day, they really like to key in on them in the spring and in the fall. And the reason, I think, is because after spring, or from late spring on, that's when you start getting the major insect hatches, and they want to change a the diet. They don't want to eat shrimp every day. Okay. And so they start feeding on the chronomid hatches, the mayfly hatches, the damselflies, the caddis, the dragonflies. And once the hatches are all over by midsummer, they're starting to look at those bread and butter food sources like shrimp again. Right. And in the fall, they're readily available, and uh, that's why they go on them so heavily again in the fall. If you want to learn more about lakes, especially in British Columbia, and probably lakes anywhere, Brian, you got a brand new book out, you and Skip Morris put together. I just had a chance to thumb through it and it's got just a ton of information. If you fish lakes, you just have to have it in your, your library because it's got so much information in it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a few years of putting that book together, but we had a lot of fun catching fish to make sure those <laughs> techniques work. The tough part of the job. Yeah. That's right. That's an excellent book. The book is entitled? It's, it, the book is called Morrison Chan, Fly Fishing the Trout Lakes. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely worth worthwhile. Brian, thanks a lot for taking the time out of, of our fishing day here because I mean, part of the, the job we have to do is fish. <laughs> so we have to go back to work here now. But uh, take the time to, uh, to come fishing with us and tell us a little bit about shrimp and lakes. And, I think we're going to go catch some more fish. Great, my pleasure, Grant. Good, thanks. Oh, he knew he was there. Came up, porpoise, gave himself away, but I already cast out. He was going in a direct line for my fly. That was just, that was just luck, absolute luck. Having the fly in the right place at the right time. Ah, the weather though, we're losing the weather. Look at this. Oh, the, you know what, we've had a couple of nibbles in here. Maybe they're starting to turn on again. Yeah, maybe, they're just waiting for the rain. Yeah. Make it tougher for us. Oh yeah. Nice fish. Can't believe you are ready, but perhaps. Come here. Just make it easier for me, fella. There. Okay. Yeah. You know what it is? He hasn't played himself out fully yet. But when they went upside down, they're supposed to make himself go dormant. There's the, the fly. There's a nice, healthy sized fish. Get him up here. There you go. Eat some fish. Okay, there he goes. Another nice one. Well, Brian, thanks a lot for taking the time to come out fishing with us. Enjoy fishing with you. You get so You're much good, information. It's just amazing. I'm glad we were able to pull a little bit out and pass it along to some of our viewers. Well, I'm glad at least the two of you caught some fish today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a tough day of fishing. It was a really tough day. You know, we, we uh, only got them on the scud, and we That's went right. through everything. I yeah. went through my whole fly box, and the only thing that had any 
luck with this gun. Yeah. That's why they call it fishing. That's it. Yeah, you're <laughs> well, not always going to go out and have a super day, but uh, it was all right. So we got a few fish. We caught some fish. We yeah. were able to get out fishing. And, and, uh, it's a nice fish for yeah. this late in the year. It, it's, it's a crapshoot when you go out. Yeah. It's yeah. just interesting to see when this lake's going to freeze over because I don't think it's going to be very long from now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be very long. No. If you get a chance to come out to the, any of the lakes in the Kamloops area, make sure you get Brian's book first because it'll tell you all about the time of year and, and what to use when you're out fishing. So it's an awesome book. When you do come out though, make sure you take care. And Conserva Waters, they've done a real good job out here at Douglas Lake Ranch, Mini Lake is one good example. It's a show, eh? Yeah, excellent. See you next time. And we'll take you spar fishing on the fly.